Now it's time to bring back Carol Sloan for her third appearance on BBS. Carol is one of those down-to-earth jazz singers. She was with Larry Elgart for two years, recorded for Columbia, Concord, and other labels. She has appeared on the Arthur Godfrey radio show, The Tonight Show, and has appeared at many jazz festivals. This next portion of our interview is about her solo career, and it all started at the Newport Jazz Festival. The Newport Jazz Festival was taken over by a man named Sid Bernstein, who had a, a record as a producer of rock and roll concerts. And what he did was agreed to put me on a thing called New Stars of 1960, whatever, 61. Also, he booked Judy Garland at that weekend's festival, which is a real turnaround because she certainly wasn't a jazz artist. But nonetheless, she, was, she filled the place. And mind you, still the place at that time was only 1,200 to 1,500 seats. It wasn't a big place. But anyway, so there I was singing um, the verse to Little Girl Blue a cappella because the piano player didn't know the verse. And I said, look, don't worry. Just give me an arpeggio in B-flat and I'll sing it. And then in the chorus, you'll hear me come in. And I never thought to shakes about whether or not I was going to be out of tune because I was never out of tune. But what happened was that in spite of the fact that the audience had just about disappeared because I came on so late, uh, the people who were there were very important. They were critics from the New York Times and the Herald Tribune and a producer from Columbia Records who was there. And so I got this wonderful reception from these very important people who went on to really help me um, get my, my feet on the ground and this launch my career. They did it. They really did it. Uh, it was Where's This Girl Come From? This is came out of the blue, and that was the title of the first album for Columbia. When I was very young, the world was younger than I, as merry as a carousel. The circus tent was strong. With every star in the sky Above the ring I love so well Now the young world has grown old And gone are the tinsel and gold So sit there and count your fingers. What can you do old girl? You're through. Sit there and count your little fingers, unlucky little girl blue. Getting 
Carol Sloan's first album, Out of the Blue, was recorded in 61 and 62. Her second LP for Columbia was live at 30th Street, referring to Columbia's 30th Street studio in New York City. Love walked right in and drove the shadows away. Love walked right in Love said hello Though not a word was spoken One look And I forgot the gloom of the past One look And I had found my future at last One Tell us about signing with Concord. Well, I knew about Concord. He didn't we all? I mean, it was a major, major, major jazz label because uh, Carl Jefferson was such a big jazz fan. He was made a fortune selling Cadillacs out there in Concord, California. But his his fun time was when he could spend some time listening to jazz musicians. And he he himself said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna build my own label. I can record these people and have them from you know in their mind. They're gonna be my artists." And that's what he wanted to do. I was in Japan. Um, <clears throat> I was in Japan in 19. The first time I went was 77. But I didn't see him or meet him until a few years later. And he, after I sang, I said, he came up to me and he said, When am I going to record you? And I said, Well, <laughs> as soon as I get back to California, if that's what you want me to do. I mean, I've been waiting for you to ask me that question for a long time. <laughs> so that was the beginning of it. I think it was 19. 88 or 89, because I went to the first, the first time I was part of the Concord Fujitsu Festival was 1990. And I opened the, the bill was me, um, the Modern Jazz Quartet, Mel Torme, and a big band led by Frank West. So that was simply wonderful. The evening breeze caress the trees tenderly. The trembling trees embrace the breeze tenderly. Then you and I came wandering by and 
and lost in a sigh were we. The show was kissed by sea and mist tenderly. I can't forget. How two hearts met breathlessly. Your arms open wide and close me inside. You took my lips, you took my love so tenderly. Carol Sloan made quite a few albums for Concord. Concord Records came to me. I didn't come to them. I had no idea how I would approach that. I have, I have never had, I've never had any serious uh, management or representative or anything like that in the whole time I've been singing. So it never ever occurred to me to ring up Carl Jefferson and say, you know, can I come to record for you? He asked me, which was wonderful. Carol Sloan is my guest, and Carol, um, you know, you did some great albums for Concord, especially one called. The song Sinatra sang. Tell us about that. Well, you know, one night I, I, when I was, I was contemplating um, the next CD, whatever it was going to be, and I asked if I could do it, uh, something as a tribute to Carmen. Right, and then I was laying there in bed, and I poked my husband at four o'clock in the morning. I said, "I got it! I got it! I got it! <laughs> it's going to be the songs Carmen sang." And then when that was done, the next thing was a Sinatra project, and they said, "Yes, you can. Yeah, do." That. I said, "Okay, that's going to be called the song Sinatra sang." And then finally in the trilogy came the songs Ella and Louis sang. That's how that happened. The songs Sinatra sang was an easy go because someone suggested I should have done an album called the songs Sinatra never sang because I've been <laughs> given an endless list of songs he never touched. Yeah, uh, really interesting. That he would ne- be. Some he never went, through, went near. You make me feel so young. You make me feel as though spring has sprung. And every time I see you grin, I'm such a happy individual. The moment that you speak, I wanna go play hide and seek. I wanna go and bounce the moon just like a toy balloon. You and I are just like a couple of times. Running across the meadow And picking up lots of forget-me-nots You make me feel so young You make me feel there are songs to be sung And bells to be rung And a wonderful fling to be flung And even when I'm old and gray I'm gonna feel the way I do
so young You make me feel as though spring is sprung And every time I see you grin I'm such a happy individual The moment that you speak I wanna go play hide and seek I wanna go where bounce the moon Just like a toy balloon Forget me not. You make me feel so young. You make me feel there are songs to be sung, and bells to be rung, and a wonderful fling to be flung. And even when I'm old and gray, I'm gonna feel the way I do. Coming up next, Walt Andrus, formerly with the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. Hi, this is Walt Andrus, and it's great to be on Jim Stone's Big Band Swing Program. Jim, Jim. Right now, it's time to meet Walt Andrus. Great to be here, Jim. Nice to talk to you again. It's been a while. Uh, by the way, how many years did you sing with the TD Band? Well, I joined the... Well, actually, I subbed for uh, the singer before me. His name was Steve Calafato. He was with the band about two and a half years uh, in 1986. And then in January of 88, I uh, joined the band full-time in January uh, in California. That's how I met Buddy, is uh, this other singer that was that was filling in for, had to take uh, some time off for uh, illness. And uh, my name came up through Warren Covington and a couple of other people that had heard me before. I know you uh, maintained a good relationship with Buddy even after you left the band. What did you think oh, about I him? Mean, to, to, to be able to stand next to that man every night we played for 15 years was amazing to, to listen to him and he, and he was uh, kind. Listening to him play the trombone was an honor. This is Buddy Merle's first band, which didn't make it. Smoke gets in your eyes. Oh, uh-huh. 
was the last time you saw Buddy? Oh, around 2006, I'd say. And when did he pass? Was it 2010? Or? Yeah, 2010, I believe. And, uh, we, you know, we kept in touch. He had done a, a job the night before. Yeah, the night before he passed away. He was in Florida at his home. And he was still out there, so he was still performing with the band right up to the last. Yeah, he said, you're going to take the band over when I retire, except he never retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Your career has really taken you around the world. How about bringing everyone up to date? After I left uh, Buddy, I was freelancing and uh, worked with uh, a couple of symphonies, that which was uh, really exciting to do to be able to do a tribute to Sinatra and uh, with the full orchestra, with the real full arrangements for strings and orchestra just tremendous sound i mean it's like walking on a cloud when you're in front of 70 pieces and i thought it was great to be in front of 17 <laughs> and then uh well i did uh many dates with chris riddle and the nelson riddle orchestra and a lot of local big bands up in connecticut and four years ago i moved to florida did you ever record with uh, the nelson riddle band no, that that opportunity hasn't come up yet. I did record since we moved down here um, with the Naples Jazz Orchestra, which is led by Bob Stone, great drummer from Chicago. He's from Michigan, actually, originally. Here is Walt Andrus with the Naples Jazz Band. Someone who needs me Someone I've needed so long For once unafraid I can go where life 
leads me and somehow I know I'll be strong Once I get touch what my heart used to dream of long before I knew Someone warm like you could make my dream come true Oh once in my life I won't let sorrow hurt me Not like it's hurt me before Oh once in my life I found someone who won't desert me I'm not alone anymore Oh once I can say This is mine, you can't take it Long as I know I have love, I can make it For once in my life, I've got someone who needs me This is mine, you won't take it Long as I know I've got love, I'm gonna make it Oh, once in my life I found someone My guest is Walt Andrus, and he will be back next hour on BBS. Carol Sloan has put on many hats during her career, jazz singer, legal secretary, instructor in her vocal workshops. She wrote for Downbeat and was a disc jockey. She is admired and respected in the jazz world today. How about working with Clark Terry? Well, I mean, there you are. This is, this is fun and games from the start. This is just... <laughs> <laughs> I've known Clark for a very, very long time. Mainly, but I think I met him probably in the 60s when I was very active in New York. And I was frequently invited by... I mean, Oscar Peterson was a friend of mine, and Oscar invited me to come to some record dates, and I would see him often. In fact, I opened for him at the, at the Village Vanguard. It was the first time I did the Vanguard. I opened for him... Uh, I was, did that for two weeks. Can you imagine being paid to sing a few songs before Oscar Peterson comes on, and then you sit there quietly and listen to him play every night for two weeks mm. and then get paid for it? <laughs> I thought I died and went to heaven. This is from Carol's album, The Songs Ella and Lewis Sang, featuring Clark Terry. <laughs>
stars fell on Alabama last night. I can't forget the glamour your eyes held a tender night and stars fell I never planned in my imagination a situation so heavenly, a fairy land where no one else could enter, and in the center, just you and me, dear, my heart be like a hammer, my Never plan in my imagination situation so heavenly oh no. a fairy land when no one else could enter and in the center just you and me dear my heart beat like a hammer my And stars fell on Alabama last night. It's off a Godfrey time. It's Arthur Godfrey time with all the little Godfreys, Jeanette Davis, Frank Saunders, the Mariners, and Archie Blyer and his orchestra. And now, here's that man himself, Arthur Godfrey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Tony Marvin. Hello, everybody. In the early 60s, Carol Sloan was a regular on Arthur Godfrey's CBS radio show. And the experience she had with Godfrey wasn't exactly the best. I also did two years with Arthur Godfrey, who was the most despicable man on the planet. Oh, he was a, he was a rat. You know, he never actually assaulted me. But they warned me when I went on the show. The musician said to me, look, you're going to have to put up with him for the first show because he's going to want to he's going to stand beside you at the microphone. And he's going to start to feel you up. So if you can stand that and get through that bath of fire, you'll be cool. Is that right? And sure enough, he did it. He was sticking his tongue in my ear and doing all kinds of things. And also, you know, he was he another guy. This is during the time when safaris were a popular form of entertainment for rich Americans. And he would go to Africa and shoot animals. And the entertainment at his house after dinner was to sit in the living room and watch slides that he, with his foot on the head of a beautiful rhinoceros or an elephant or a tiger or something. It was just, I mean, I, weren't, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't stand it. Hmm. It was hard. It was a very difficult time. So I did everything to stay out of his way. I only got on that show because of Dave Garraway. Dave was asked to sub for Arthur, who was going to take a vacation. 
And Garraway was a big, he loved good singers, and he somehow heard my first albums and had a, CBS contact me to come in and be the singer for the two weeks he was going to do the show. So I did, and we became good friends, and he was just, I, I just adored him. He was just amazingly wonderful. So when he left, he also left my albums in Arthur's office. So Arthur comes back from his vacation, and he sees these LPs sitting in his sound system and says, who the heck is this? And Well, let's call her. So sure enough, I got a call to come on, and I was with him for two years. This was CBS Radio, right? Yeah. Night and day, you are the one. Only you beneath the moon and under the sun. No matter, darling, where you are, I think of you night and day, day and night. Why is it so that this longing for you follows wherever I go in the roaring traffic's boom? In the silence of my lonely room, I think of you. Carol Sloan was on The Godfrey Show two years, and she did get to meet some interesting people. We would tape two shows daily, but it was kind of interesting because I never knew who was going to be on the show. So I sat beside Alfred Hitchcock in one show and beside uh, Errol Garner. One. He said to, <laughs> he said to <laughs> Errol Garner one time, Errol, how is it that we don't know about your brother down there in Pittsburgh? I understand he's a good piano player, too. How do we know about him? Errol said, well, he can read. <laughs> or Errol could not. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got a million of those stories. They're all in my book. Oh. Did I bent your ear long enough? Oh, this is just great, Carol. I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, all this information that I've never heard about before. Tell me about your book. Is that coming out or is it out? No, no, it's not out. I'm still struggling with it. I'm working with it. I mean, I, I had I had a pretty good um I had to put a grip grip on it, and then I lost a great chunk of it. And, it, I, and then I was I was uh, distracted by writing reviews and liner notes from some people. The first chapter is called "I Heard Voices in the Night," and that refers, of course, to the people I heard late at night on my radio. Oh, the yeah. Voices of, of disc jockeys who were playing music I'd never heard before. You know, this was jazz. I said, "Wait mm-hmm. a minute, this th- I like this. Whatever this is, I really like this." My friends thought Elvis Presley was the world, and I thought Count Basie was the guy I liked. Carol, how about some Count Basie right now?
The Late Late Show by Count Basie during the time he recorded for a roulette. Carol Sloan will be back next week to talk about her 60-plus years in show business. Walt. Time to bring back Walt Andrus. Walt started playing the tenor sax at a young age. He was only 12, and by the time he was 17, he was singing with the big bands. In 1987, Buddy Morrow asked Walt to fill in with the TD band, and within a year, he was a member of the band for the next 15 years. Here is Walt with Buddy Morrow. To somebody else And she means those tender songs For somebody else And even when I have my arms around her You know her thoughts are strong For somebody else Well, the hands I hold belong to somebody else And I'll bet they're not so cold to somebody else Well, it's tough to be alone on the shelf Worse to fall in love by yourself When the one you love belongs to somebody else What else? Walt Andrus moved to Florida. He was contacted by the Naples Jazz Band. Bob called me in Connecticut, and I came down and did one one concert in 2013, and then we moved down here in 2014, and we recorded. Uh, I, I the, the band was a nonprofit, so we were basically doing uh, outdoor concerts during season, which is in the spring months down here because the summers get hot. And uh, I did concerts with him for two, two or three seasons. And you did uh, some recording, uh, live recordings with uh, the band, too. Yeah, it just came out, and it's available on Amazon. It's on Hindsight Records. It's called Swingin' Jazz Affair Live, the Naples Jazz Orchestra featuring Walt Andrus. <laughs> I'm not the guy 
cared about love, and I'm not the guy who cared about the fortunes and such. I never cared much, but look at me now. I never knew the technique of kissing, and I never knew the thrill I could get from her touch. I Casanova at his best With a new heart And a brand new start I'm so proud I'm busting my best So I'm the guy Who turned out a lover Yes, I'm the guy Who liked the most blue diamond rings Just one of those things Oh, look at me now for Frank Sinatra we drew about 3,000 people outside and I, unbeknownst to us it was recorded and Bob recorded often so nobody had any jitters because we didn't we weren't thinking about the microphones being there it was just a live you know one take thing that we just found out later that he recorded it and then decided to release it my story is much too sad to be told But practically everything Leaves me totally cold The only exception I know is the case When I'm out on a quiet spree Fighting vainly the old ennui then I suddenly turn and see your fabulous face. I get no kick from champagne, beer, alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. So tell me why should it be true That I get a, a kick out of you Some like the bop type A refrain the obby I'm sure that if I heard even one riff Twit bore me to rest Get a, a kick out of you I get a kick Every time I see you Standing there before me I get a kick Though it's quite clear to see you Obviously Do not adore me. I get no kick in a 
My guest is Walt Andrus, who used to sing with the Buddy Merle-led Tommy Dorsey band. Uh, I was 24 when I joined Buddy. <laughs> 24, yeah. Can't believe it's, I can't believe it's 30 years ago. Buddy's, Buddy's band, I mean, the, the Dorsey band is still out there. Who's leading it now? Well, Buddy's wife maintained a deal with uh, Tommy Dorsey's son. Now, he used to deal with Jane, his widow. Jane passed away when I was on the band. In fact, I went to her funeral. Uh, so the son and daughter own it through inheritance. And they just said, okay, Carol, you can just keep doing what you're doing. So she hired a friend of Buddy's, uh, Terry Myers, to lead the band. He's, he's a uh, clarinet saxophone player, and he lived in, and actually lived very close to Buddy, and they were good friends for many years. We had met Ray Anthony, Buddy and I were in California, and uh, Ray's 96 now. He's the only band leader still alive. He's got a nice home in Hollywood. I haven't talked to him in a long time. We used to do a lot of interviews with him. Uh, he's on Facebook. Once again, Walt Andrus. How about future plans? What's coming up for you? Well, I have some stuff coming up that I really have to keep secret at the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have, that'll keep you a... Uh, I'll keep you abreast, and as soon as it comes to fruition, you'll be first to know, and we'll do another interview. Okay, that's a deal. I'll uh, I'll agree to that. It'll be great to talk to you again. And, uh, so we're looking forward to that, Walt, and I want to thank you very much for being on our show. My pleasure, Jim. I want to be around to pick up the pieces when somebody breaks your heart. Some somebody twice as smart as I A somebody who could swear to be true Like you used to do with me That misery loves company Wait and see I want to be around To see how he does it When he breaks your heart to bits Let's see if the puzzle fits 
so fine And that's when I'll discover That revenge is sweet As I sit there applauding From a front row seat When somebody breaks your heart Like you broke Thank Carol Sloan and Walt Andrus for joining us. And by the way, Carol will be back with us next week for part four of our interview with her. Be sure to check out the Jim Stone Facebook page for stations, times, and dates. Until next week, thanks for listening.